Hello there, you little demons. Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval format where I, the crown... Format? Format? Where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you. Yes, you, the person who unfortunately has not one, not two, but three mouth ulcers at the same time. <laughs> so much pain. One was regular and I bit my te I bit my cheek twice. I'm in so much pain but I shall persevere because I am a YouTube legend and not a little big boohoo baby. Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we have none others to thank than where is my kazoo? <laughs> Antoine Weldon for their suggestion of video games that gave you immediate buyer's remorse. Now there surely isn't a gamer among us who hasn't enthusiastically coughed up top dollar for a new video game only to feel an unmistakable pang of regret within minutes of booting it up. And it is a horrible feeling, the cold sweat on the back of your neck as you come to appreciate that maybe you just spaffed a chunk of your hard-earned cash right up the bloody wall. Buyer's remorse is very, very real, and it was especially true when it came to the video games we're going to talk about today. So let's not waste any more time, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video games that gave you immediate buyer's remorse. And you know the drill by now, say hi to me here down below with all of your suggestions for next week's episode. With that in mind, let's get on with this list, shall we? <laughs> Number 8, Fallout 76. Oh god, here it is, it's time to talk about Fallout 76, and I'm going to reintroduce a character that many of you may remember from way, way back in the Choose Your Adventure days, Uncle 76. Alright mate. <laughs> Got any snaps? <laughs> yes, here is Uncle 76, the drunken lout of the family, who ruins the good name of the rest of the Fallout universe. He stinks. I hate him. And even after years and years of people telling me that he's gotten good eventually, well, I just gesture back to the previous example. Snaps! <laughs> Now Fallout, with its rich open worlds, was made for a multiplayer experience, but within 30 or so minutes of booting this game up, it was clear that something, well, many things even, were very, very wrong. For starters, on launch, Fallout 76 felt painfully barren as online open worlds go, in large part due to the absence of human NPCs. Between that, the dull missions, scantily existent story, and brutal performance issues, upon release this was an experience as thunderously boring as it was infuriating. And to make matters worse, there is still, to this day, no way to play this game offline. Why? That's the one reason that I would actually consider giving this a go! Yet many players saw the writing on the wall in the early going and sought refunds within the release window. Now, while I will admit Fallout 76 is in a better state today, it is still in one. An absolute state when compared to the rest of the pantheon of gaming that is the Fallout franchise. I mean, imagine the gall of this game, striding up over there being like, oh, Fallout New Vegas, hold my new Coca-Cola, mate. I'm going to show you how it's done. And then falling so hard on its face that the bottle impaled it through the eye and then gave them a spore infection due to that stupid helmet that they released with the special edition. Number 7. Devil May Cry 2 Now considering what a wild breath of fresh air the original Devil May Cry was, many were comfortable throwing down their hard-earned dollar to pre-order the sequel long before any reviews dropped. But instead, Capcom served up what can only be described as a massive ascent towards a rocky summit and finally looking out over a vista only to have the ground crumble away and watch everything they built fall as they twist and turn in the breeze like a paper bag or a walker's crisp packet. Devil May Cry 2 feels less like a full-fat scale-upping follow-up than a direct-to-video spin-off produced by Capcom's B-Team, so blatant was the step back from its glorious predecessor. And I mean, where to begin? It's too easy to point to the tedium of the combat that was noticeably scaled back in complexity and was clearly a cynical decision intended to make the game appeal to a wider player base, but elsewhere the enemies and levels were blander than your great aunt's tapioca pudding, and for reasons that will never become clear, Dante was turned into a serious, stoic sad sack compared to his more animated and charismatic portrayal in the original game. It's no secret these days that DMC2 was produced under enormous internal strife, with the game even changing directors during the final six months of production, but that did little to calm players who effectively felt shortchanged by what should have been a slam dunk sequel. Thankfully Devil May Cry 3 arrived on the scene to push Devil May Cry 2 to the side and just be like, yeah, just... sorry about him. Number 6. State of Emergency 
Now, Grand Theft Auto 3 was such a landmark title for the medium that it truly seemed like Rockstar Games could do no wrong in its wake, enough that oh so many of us believed that their action game released mere months later State of Emergency simply couldn't help but be a total banger, right? Yeah, about that. Now, see, I really do enjoy State of Emergency for what it is, but there is a slight caveat on that, and that is for what it is. And what it is, not, is Grand Theft Auto 3. Now, back in 2002, the distinction between publishers and developers wasn't quite so clear, and so many believed that this Rockstar published beat-em-up was being made by the same folk behind GTA 3. Well, not quite, because State of Emergency actually came from Viz Entertainment, whose previous release being a critically mauled Powerpuff Girls game probably should have been enough to clue everybody in. But alas, 2002 was a decidedly more innocent time where players en masse were considerably less media savvy. And so what happened was is that State of Emergency came out, everyone was like, GTA 3, yes, yes, and then everyone was like, eh, yeah, why not, let's just say yes, 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 and they were like, yes, 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 hand over the money, hand over the money, and they were like, ha, 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 bye, 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 say goodbye to all of your happiness, my friend, because the experience that you've just bought is about as shallow as a cat's sick puddle. Yee. As impressive as it was to see so many brawling bodies on the screen at once in the PS2 era, the gameplay was simple to a fault, enough so that it felt more like a tech demo than something worth dropping a launch day chunk of change on. And it didn't take more than a few minutes of playing to realise that this wasn't a polished GTA caliber product and that you've been soundly duped. Number 5. Spore now, Spore has been so thoroughly banished to the back alleys of gaming that it's basically been forgotten that it was hyped up as being the next big thing for years up until its eventual drop date in 2008. Now, technically it was a big thing, but that big thing was a bit of a big disappointment. I was going to say turd, but that's a bit, that's a bit harsh. Designed by SimCity and the Sims legend Will Wright, Spore was touted as a god game in which players would immediately control a species development from a single-celled organism to a hyper-intelligent spacefaring race. Now, pre-release gameplay previews teased an astonishing scope and degree of granularity with which players could manipulate their species growth. Yet, when Spore finally hit stores after countless delays, the end product well felt noticeably dumbed down. Gameplay ultimately amounted to five stages of your species' development, each of which were disappointingly simplistic linear minigames, leaving many wondering why EA had hyped this game to the heavens or that they themselves had bothered buying it on launch. And like I said before, this isn't to say that Spore is entirely charmless. It is a fun game and the character creatures that you can make, they're, they're wonderfully weird. I love that aspect about it. But when it came to gameplay, it's hard to justify a full fat price tag for this. And it definitely felt that the project was affected by scope creep, that everyone was like, yeah, let's add this in, let's add this in, let's add this in. And the poor developers were like, oh, please stop, please, for the love of God, stop. And so the final result was a puddle deep letdown that felt less like a triple A triumph more, and more like five relatively mediocre mini games that were bundled together. Number four, Saints Row 2022 edition. Right, so let's face facts here. All of the marketing for the most recent Saints Row video game suggested that we were not getting a good game. We were going to get a dumb game, and that's completely fine. Dumb games can be absolutely brilliant. I mean, just look at God Hand. But at the same time, this was not God Hand and more just a fist right up the, well, you know where. Because what we got was characters that lacked personality, a plot that just isn't outlandish enough, and missions that were just aggressively generic, which all added up to an experience that was unfortunately dull and even outright soulless. There's an oddly corporate feeling to this reboot that in trying to appeal to as wide a demographic as possible, it lost sight of what made Saints Row popular in the first place. Considering that barely a week goes by without a brilliant game or two being released, it's tough for anyone who threw down day one cash for this not to wince at the sheer thought of it. And it places this title in a category marked wait until a massive sale. But then again, so many other games are also going to be on sale. So why not spend your money elsewhere? So therefore that category is completely moot. Just like Saints Row 2022. Number three, WWE 2K20. Oh, <laughs> imagine, imagine being a person who paid full price for this on release. Imagine being a person who requested a review copy, didn't get one. So went out day one to go grab a copy bring it back to his house, called over his friend Liam to the house to sit down and play through what should have been a fantastic wrestling experience. Imagine being that idiot. Imagine being that fat, bold idiot. Imagine being that fat, bold, sad idiot. Can we move on to the next game, please? Number two, Assassin's Creed Unity. 
Ah, Assassin's Creed Unity. I swear down this game was mwah, chef's kiss territory for memes. Not for being a game, but for memes, ooh, absolute treasure vault, my friend. But then again, that's probably not what it was setting out to achieve. This basically made it clear that Ubisoft's annualized approach to the franchise was becoming unsustainable. Unity was absolutely pilloried by press and players alike on launch day due to the atrocious state of its release build, which was rife with technical issues such as the infamously horrific bug which removed their entire faces. But beyond that, the story was amongst the series' weakest, and protagonist Arno isn't exactly one of the franchise's more beloved protagonists. Years removed from Unity's embarrassing launch, there's certainly a decent game here. I mean, the Parisian locations in particular hold up incredibly well almost an entire decade later, but for anyone buying in upon release, well, the white-hot anger was palpable and well-earned. But you know what, though? There was actually a silver lining to the Unity experience, and that was forcing Ubisoft to say, this probably isn't working in our best interest, is it? Let's just scale things back, and for everyone, including our wallets, we were all pretty grateful for that. And number one, Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy, The Definitive Edition. Okay, let's just face facts here. Let's put our hands up. We all bought this game, right? We all bought this game upon day one. Because why wouldn't we? It is all of the classic GTA experiences on one package and meant to be the best looking one going. And yet... Oh, nostalgia, you are one hell of a drug. Now, on paper, a glossy remaster of the original trilogy of 3D GTA games, GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas, should have been one of Rockstar's easiest ever wins. All they needed to do was update the visuals, implement a few quality of life gameplay changes, and keep the core of each game exactly the same otherwise. But Rockstar evidently took their eye off the ball long enough for Grove Street Games to fumble it completely, delivering a remaster that felt more like a fan project than a polished experience worth your actual money. From the uncanny art style to the lo-fi character models and especially the headache-inducing rain effects, the game simply doesn't look good. And when you factor in the overabundance of glitches and disappointingly absent songs from the original trilogy as a package, it is just not good enough. But here's the thing, the fact that Rockstar let this game out of the stable in the state it was in is quite astonishing actually, because clearly they're just like, People will buy this, no matter what. I could deliver them a crisp, ripe turd in a box, and they would probably buy it if it had the GTA logo stamped onto it. And that is a sign that maybe they're not your best friends as a publisher or a developing house, really, is it? Hmm, something to muse on. Not even the fleeting dopamine hit of reliving your childhood playing the trilogy could entirely mask the remaster's lingering stink of low-effort production and technical incompetence. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video games that gave you immediate buyer's remorse. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, and put your suggestions for next week's episode down there as well. Now, before I go, I just want to say something here. I want to give a massive shout out to Dan and the rest of the crew for editing last week's 175th special. It was absolutely phenomenal. Now, I was actually kept in the dark about all of the goings on there. I knew that my uh, that my colleagues were going to be recording some bits, and I knew what the title of it was. But to see it all to come together there was absolutely hilarious. I was sat here laughing like an idiot. I was alone in my house, apart from my cats, and I was just there like, ha 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 ha, God, ah, ah. And I just, it was the best time. It was the best time, and I missed them all dearly. So thank you very much, and thank you, the community, for supporting us all the way through this long, long stretch. What we're going to do for 200 is the next question. Dan, any ideas? Any ideas? Did somebody say trip up to Newcastle live stream? Oh, oh. <laughs> well, if what culture's paying for it, mate? Anyway, back on track, you know, plug the social medias over here for Dan and myself, and let's talk about one legend to another, and talk about you, my friend, in the final section of this show. Because we spoke today about video games that gave us buyer's remorse. And you know what? Sometimes we will have remorse in our day-to-day -day lives. We will regret actions that we made in the past. But you know what, my friends? Just try and forgive yourself. Those things happened, unfortunate as it is, but you've just got to try and move on with them. You've got to accept that they happened, learn a valuable lesson from those experiences, and go on vowing to not try and make those same mistakes again. And just try not to beat yourself up too much because you deserve love, happiness, and success. That is the most important thing there, to let go of the mistakes and all the angst and anger and sadness of your past and move forward with a more positive angle. Because I just want nothing but the best for you, and I know you want that too, all right? So treat yourself with love, and I'll speak to you very, very soon. Be quiet, air fresh. Now I'm talking now. Big love to you all. Peace out.